Hi, and welcome to another episode of The Sound of Money. And uh, uh, Sound of Money, as we all know, we've been focusing on macroeconomics. We've also been discussing about uh, financial trends uh, in business, uh, especially the ones we spoke about cryptocurrencies. And of course, one more important area of discussion has always been uh, financial literacy. And yes, on the episode today, we're going to talk about financial literacy, and we continue to talk about it in, in The Sound of Money. Sound of Money with Santosh Seru. Hello and welcome to The Sound of Money. And I have my guest, uh, Meeta Gupta. Hi, Meeta. Hi, Santosh. How are you doing? All well. Thank you. So, Mita, it's good to have you once again on our show. And uh, Mita, as you all know, uh, she is the founder of Mula, which is a financial literacy women's forum. And she's been very actively uh, involved uh, on, on, as through Mula, uh, always advising, suggesting ways and means to how to manage one's finances for women. And, and I'm very privileged to have her joining me from Dubai, talking about financial literacy for everyone as a whole. And we've been talking about savings, how to go about with, uh, you know, a saving, basic savings. But on our episode today, we're going to talk about the importance of wealth. So the first question, of course, Meeta, to you is, what is wealth and how does one go about accumulating it? So thank you again, uh, Santosh, for having me on this show. And it's always a pleasure to be here. Uh, uh, Interesting question, uh, what is wealth? So for me, wealth really is two parts. One is income and the other is assets. So the first part would be, I mean, if I say income, is income what you earn. Hmm. You could be doing a job, you could be having a business of your own and you earn income. You could be doing a side hustle and you earn some income. This income you use to build your assets yeah. and those assets as you create them over a period of time could result in you cr- increasing your wealth and now why do I say could that's an interesting qu- uh, thing in itself so when I talk about assets let's talk about assets to begin with so mm. when I really talk about assets assets are two kinds of assets there are assets which are Uh, you know, necessities and luxuries. And there are investments. So investments are also assets. And your day to day things that you spend on your car, your furniture, your, you know, various other things that your clothes or whatever are all also your assets. But do all assets really, you know, lead to uh, wealth? What do you think? I think it's a good question, but one really needs to give a thought to it. Uh, But definitely, in my view, not really, not really leading to quote unquote wealth depends on the usage, depends on the uh, productivity element of it. And most importantly, I think, is it a genuine need or not? True, true. Absolutely right, Santosh. So there's certain assets which which are productive. They give us revenue of uh, over a period of time. They give us income over a period of time. And then there are certain assets which are not productive. And mostly your assets, which are your necessities and your luxuries, are not the ones which give you, uh, which generate income for you over a period of time. Hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> However, having said that, within, within, <clears throat> sorry, within assets which are your, which you call investments too, there could be some assets which, do, which are not productive. Example, hmm. uh, gold. Yeah. So well, while gold is sitting with us, there might be a capital appreciation over a period of time. But when gold sits with us, it's not earning money for us. Yeah. But no a share or a bond yeah. or a fixed deposit or a mutual fund is actually earning. Or if you have a house, you're putting it on rent, you're getting actual income you get, you know. Yeah. So over a period of time, yeah. if you build assets which generate income for you, Those are the assets which you would really classify as wealth for you, because those are the ones which will, uh, you know, which uh, if we if you remember in the past, we talked about a word called financial freedom. Yeah. And those are the assets which will lead you to financial freedom over a period of time. Yeah. But let's step back one sec. So uh, let me give you, you know, I had actually uh, attended a webinar uh, some months back. 
So this was a webinar where there were these rural women who were there in, in that uh, webinar talking to a bank, which was a, a Grameen Mahila Bank. It's, mm-hmm. a, it's a rural bank for women where they get money for various uh, activities yeah. they may mm. want, right? Yeah. So the, one of the uh, ladies had actually, so these were COVID times. Mm. People had, they were all the migrant labor had shifted back to their homes and, you know, I mean, food was difficult and people didn't have uh, jobs. So there was this lady who had a lot of gold with her. Mm-hmm. And so what she did was she went and mortgaged her gold to the bank. So she, she took loan against the gold. Hmm. And when she went to the bank and took loan against the gold, she used that money to buy a sheep and a, uh, a buffalo. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then she then used that sheep and buffalo, the, the milk of the sheep and buffalo. Yeah. So she started selling the, the milk of the sheep and the buffalo and generated income. Yeah. So now her gold stays with her, right? It's only in the bank, which she yes. can get back over a period of time once she pays away the loan. So Correct. there is gold, which is sitting in the bank, which belongs to her. She now also has two more assets. She has a buffalo and she has a sheep. Yeah. And both of those things are generating income, income for her, True. right? And so she also has income. So this is like multiplication of wealth, yeah. right? Where, where yeah. you're... Your old income is being used to generate more income. That income is being used to feed people. That income is being used to repay your loan. And you've also built two assets as a part of it. So it's always, you know, anything which is productive in terms of assets. So now the sheep and the buffalo are productive assets. Gold was an unproductive asset. The unproductive asset has been used to create two productive assets, Mm. which are generating future income. Agree. Yeah. So, so much to learn, right, from so, so, rural uh, experiences. Absolutely. You know, and, and and really see how very simple minds thinking about yeah. it very practically and implementing it exactly what it's very pragmatic approach to life. Totally, totally. Yeah. So that was so beautiful. I mean, it, that's that's that webinar just stayed with me because it was so awesome. True. True. Yeah. So so when you talk about wealth and productive and unproductive assets. Uh, with your experiences, with your interactions with women, with experiences, what they have shared with you, uh, uh, what exactly should be the right approach? Have there been any miscalculated moves or you found, I wish they had done something, something that you can share about, talk about? So another interesting example. Okay, let me just, I mean, that's something, in fact, I share a lot in my Mula uh, posts also. So there are two friends. Okay. And this is something which happens in most, uh, in a lot of, uh, I won't say houses, lots of people think that way. And that's, I mean, you have to decide which, which category are you. Yeah. So they're two friends, very close friends, and uh, they have, you know, just got very hefty bonuses mm-hmm. from their banks. And they've decided that, okay, now, you know, I mean, we have good amount of money. Let's, what do we do with this money? So one of them decides, let's call them one, let's call one of them Rahul. Let's call the other one Kabir. Okay, mm. two guys. Mm. Yeah. So Rahul decides that the money that I get, he's like very uh, bullish on Goa. Mm-hmm. So he decides that let me build some villas in Goa because people during these COVID times are really investing in Goa. So let me build some villas in Goa and use my money towards that. Kabir, on the other hand, is very fond of these cards. Mm. You know, these sports cars and all. So he says, I'm going to buy, go and buy a Lamborghini car. And so I'm going to buy a designer sports edition car. And he goes and buys that. Cut to three years later. Okay, Rahul has sold his villas. He's earned some income. Uh, for um, Kabir, that Lamborghini becomes a white elephant. Yeah, it becomes like, you know, it's so expensive. The parts, spare parts are not easy to find. He has to import his spare parts. It's breaking down. And he's like really upset because it's guzzling a lot of, you know, his money. Yeah. And so he's he's like seeing Rahul really happy. And he says, oh, my God, this guy seems to be making money. We're we're in the same boat. How come he's doing so well and and I'm not? And so he uh, 
you know so they said okay let's meet again so rahul and kabir meet and kabir like pours his heart out with rahul he says what have you done well and what where have i gone wrong and rahul tells him that see i created villas when i sold the villa i was able to get more money and that money i again used to create more villas and when i did that i was able to multiply my wealth what did you do you bought a depreciating asset an asset which goes down in value over a period of time and when apart from that the maintenance cost of the car was high it became a gas guzzler True. all these things led to your erosion of your wealth so it's not about one thought is to say that what you invested in that it becomes an extremely important uh, gauge of whether your wealth will multiply or will erode over a period of time yeah. of course kabir understood that and said that yeah i mean i understand my mistake so he was i mean so you need to to be mindful right i mean we we all get excited and say oh my god i mean, i need to have a big uh, a car or you know my furniture has to be really good my house has to look really plush i need to buy the most expensive clothes these are all depreciating assets so the the value erodes over a period of time there's often a saying which says that you know it's not how much you earn it's how much you spend and where you spend agree which shows whether you're going to be rich or poor yeah yeah absolutely in fact uh, with covid times right one has to one and a lot of people really i know have in uh, it's it's time for introspection right uh, is totally. that luxury what we all wanted has it really ha- made us happy if so how much and if not then why i think that's very important and exactly a, a true learning of on on a wealth creation uh, standpoint is the productive assets you know if you lost your job or or you know are not getting the right job then are the other productive assets uh, you know giving you that you know the, the the income the source of income which is the alternative source so i think these are very key factors one should think about and if not gone into then get into this mode and start investing the right way right in fact one more thought which i had and again that's another uh, you know example which i would give you is that people ask how much should i earn yeah and i tell them it's really a you know a, it's your financial thermostat mm. which basically means that each one decides for themselves what temperature is comfortable for them and once you've set your thermostat at that temperature automatically the room kind of you know over a period of time it comes settles and adjusts yeah uh, correct right it's the same thing with our income if i call myself that i'm like a 10 crore person i'm going to see to it that somewhere or the other i earns that much and i reach that level mm. if i call myself a 1 crore or a 1 lakh person or a 10 lakh person really depends what your financial thermostat is yeah agree and i mean i mean think of donald trump think of mukesh ambani what is their finance will they mm. see their wealth go down beyond a particular point right mm. so it's up to us to up that it's up yeah. to us to see where we benchmark ourselves yeah yeah one last question before we leave meeta what is financial freedom you know it's it's quite a cliche point or topic that is talked about but the reality yes. is we are very far away from the financial freedom for whatever reasons it could be loans it could be lots of dependent parents issues it could be many many other issues right so what exactly is this financial freedom and where do you see that going in the ordinary lives of people who you've interacted with so again i i love telling stories antor so i'm going to tell course, you yet yeah. another story okay yeah. and this is on financial freedom so i call it someone has to sweat it out so either you sweat it out right so you work hard you do uh, so uh, uh, often i give the example of my mother as when i was kid i used to see her work really hard at home she used to you know do the cooking she used to do the cleaning she used to do whatever get the groceries whatever over a period of time we got a maid and so the work of the house did not reduce but we had somebody else to share it mm. right and now my mother worked less and the maid work more but the house work was done yeah it's the same thing whether we work or our assets work somebody has to work it out yeah somebody has to sweat if you don't so the better is you get your assets to sweat how do you get your assets to sweat by creating productive assets by creating assets which create wealth 
and by asset, creating assets which over a period of time help you to gain your freedom so that you can do what you are passionate about and your assets continue to generate wealth day and night while you are busy doing your fun activities. Yeah, yeah, correct. Absolutely. Always a pleasure talking to you, Meeta, uh, on, 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 on these episodes of The Sound of Money. And of course, our journey on financial literacy will continue. And I'm sure we have a lot more topics. And, and I, I recall Meeta telling me uh, when you were discussing the very initial you know, uh, episodes of The Sound of Money, she said, you know, there are no dearth of issues. And, you know, we got to just decide where do we start? And that's the journey where we started. And so glad to have you, Meeta, joining us from on Thank the sound so of much. money. Meeta Gupta, uh, founder of Moolah, always a pleasure having you on the sound of money. And well, with that, we come to the end of this episode of the sound of money. More to come. Always stay tuned to the sound of me, money with me, Santosh. of money with Santosh Serut.